So, so Neptune doesn't have anything to do with my seventh house. It does, but it's at 14 degrees. So your seventh house, your your angle uh, is at 14 degrees Neptune. That's where it begins. So that means that there's 16 degrees left to your seventh house, which means there's another uh, almost 14 degrees uh, that, that's in the sign after that, which would be Aries. So I would say that Neptune is the predominant uh, sign for your seventh house because that's the gateway. That's what leads into the house. But that's not how the house ends. So it's a mix of energies, a mixture of energies. Um, but but to get to and have a relationship or to get to the core of the, the, the sector of relationships, um, you've got to go through both Chiron and Pisces and the, and the gateway to the to the angle, which is Neptune. So Neptune plays a big role in your seventh house. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know they're in there. Well, um, my question is, uh, is I have been running into the mortally wounded. Uh-huh. Men, and it's like i am been told that, well, I'm supposed to help them, but I'm tired of that, and I want to raise my vibration to bring in the spirituality Right. I want to know um, what is the spiritual, the high spiritual side of that, because I've been getting the low side when it comes to attracting partners. Right. And I, you know, get into this illusion that, oh, he's the one, only right. to find out that in the beginning it's like I really know he's not, but I want him to be because I'm tired of waiting on a relationship, and then I find out that they're just mortally wounded. And is Chiron attracting that, or you know, absolutely. what does that mean? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that's, I mean, that, yeah. I mean, you know, Chiron is crazy people that don't look like they're crazy, but they're crazy. Right. Well, that's Chi. You know, look, you have, you've got Mars and Virgo, you know, right in your ascendant, and Mars and Virgo is all about fixing things. You know, it's about being efficient. It's about getting things done. It's about working. You know, Mars, you know, Virgo is service, right? I mean, that's what we associate with Virgo is this quality of service. And Mars is will, it's action. And, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's getting things done. And, you know, so you need a mission in life. That really you do. You need a mission in life with Mars and Virgo on your ascendant. So, you're, you know, and your Mars opposes Chiron and Pisces. So, you know, you, you've attached your, your Mars and Virgo to your Chiron so your mission has been to fix these 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 men who are spiritually wounded and emotionally wounded, and you know obviously you're you're tired of that, and um, you know how do you change it? Well, you, what you do is you redirect the energy of Mars instead of you know having Chiron be the anchor and having to pull Mars you know toward towards it. You turn Mars around, and Mars is now the now the you know it's now the boat pulling pulling Chiron. So what you I think the best thing for you, um, Lenise, to, to deal with this is to not focus on on the relationships and to not focus on the men. And that might be lonely for you, but if you are, are if you can direct your Mars energy in Virgo out through the first house and out through the ascendant, and you know be engaged in service and the community and helping and you know, really, you know, raising the vibration of other people around you without having to tend to um, these, these poor wounded men, you know, and, and uh, their shattered psyches and all that stuff. Um, what will happen is, is that naturally people will gravitate to you um, that will be closer to what, you know, you're feeling and what you could, uh, you want to aspire towards. Now, you can't disregard Chiron, though, right there at the edge of the sixth and the seventh. I mean, I think it's really there for a reason. It's not, I mean, you can't, you can say to yourself, well, it's there for me to kind of, you know, um, brush up against and push off against and deal with and, and, you know, um, to be discerning with and that all that stuff is real. But at the same time, you know, there's like a, there's like a gift there with Chiron in the sixth. And it may not necessarily be about, you know, healing men. Um, but it, it, but it could really be about being engaged in the art of kind of, uh, deep spiritual, uh, compassionate, uh, service towards others. Because again, it, it starts in the sixth, moves to the seventh. For me personally, 
I would take and, pl and, and, and try to move the energy or keep the energy in the sixth, you know, and have it to be towards, you know, people that are less fortunate than you, you know, whether it's children, whether it's uh, ho the homeless, whether it's uh, people that are suffering from debilitating uh, physical conditions, you know, this is a classic example of you being able to line your energy up with a, a an aspect of Chiron that would be working for you r rather than working against you. Now you're going to be going through your Chiron return, and my sense, Lenise, is, is that when you when you hit your Chiron return, when Chiron finally touches your sixth, uh, your Chiron and your sixth, and then moves into your seventh, my sense is is that you will be ready to have a relationship. Um, that will be, I would say, more of the uh, redemptive aspect of Chiron. And now what we're talking about would be two people that would be working together to help alleviate the suffering of others. Because, because if you could work on that energy and put your energy out there into the world, and you're, you're helping and you're serving and and people around you are really just, you know, benefiting from this this Mars and Virgo you've got in the first. And, and really, Lenise, you've got a contract to serve and help people with Chiron uh, on the 6th and the 7th in Pisces. You you can't get away from that. You have a contract to, to, to do that in this lifetime. But it would be a lot easier for you if you had somebody you could do it with. It would be a lot more rewarding if there was somebody who could be with you step for step and working with you and loving you and loving your work together, you know, it would be kind of like the equivalent of having a ministry with somebody else, you know, like a co-ministry. And I think ultimately that's the kind of relationship that you will be um, gravitating towards and will be the most spiritually fulfilling for you because now you don't have to do all the work by yourself. Now you don't have to do the heavy lifting that there's somebody else who would be just as invested in, uh, bringing um, your compassion and your love and your ability to to serve and, and make life better for others. I mean, that is truly the greatest gift, you know, is to be able to serve in that way and in a very enlightened and, and conscious fashion. And that's that's why you're here. So I, my, my here's my take. My take is that once Chiron, and you may have to go through, you know, one more toad with a wart on him. You might, Okay. But what's the last one? I'm scraping yeah. him off the bottom of my feet as we speak. Yeah, so so you're gonna so you'll have to go through that. But I'm telling you, once once you go through that Chiron return, Chiron return is very liberating. It's a very liberating aspect. And I'll tell you from my own perspective, the day Chiron uh hit my Chiron, my natal Chiron, the day my father died. My father died on my Chiron return, which was two years ago. And I'll tell you, I love my father. My father, to me, was, uh, he, was, he, was he was one of the, the great people, uh, the great unknown people in history for me. And my father, when he passed away, I felt liberated because he was a huge personality. And I felt a little suffocated by him at times. And now I don't. And now I, I have a, you know, I have a lot more of a sense of freedom. I don't feel like there's somebody judging me all the time, which I felt like quite often he did. He had Moon and Virgo. Wow. So I, what I'm sharing when with will you. Will that hit for me, Robert? Go ahead. I'm sorry. When will the Chiron? Chiron return for you. Well, let's check it out. Let's go into a uh, the chart here. My screen got all messed up all of a sudden. Hold on. So I got to reorient myself to my screen. You know, by the way, when you go through your Chiron return, it's going to be trining your natal Neptune. That's very powerful. That is, to me, that's a that's a very deep, very cleansing, very healing, uh, spiritual rebirth and sense of freedom. I'm, I I think that's a great, great aspect for you. I, be, I deserve it. I am looking forward to it. I think you, you deserve are so it. so validating. Yesterday, I just didn't know what I was going to do. And I had these thoughts that you're mentioning now that I want to help, but I don't feel that I'm helping now. I'm, I'm, I'm with people. I'm working with people, 
but it's really not where I'm supposed to be. Uh-huh. And that's becoming very, very painful because I'm not I'm not getting anything out of it. I, I feel like I'm not really doing what I'm supposed to do and I feel like it's time out for wasting time and wasting my love and and yeah. giving of myself somewhere where it's just being squandered in my work and in relationship. Yeah. I agree. I you know that that is you know, that is a very kind of Sagittarian, you know, come to Jesus kind of moment, you know. Um, so, you know, I think that, um, your Chiron return happens in 2014, by the way. So it sounds like it's a long ways off and and then you're gonna have to, you know, wait until then. I, I don't look at astrology like that because you'll have, you'll have other transits along the way that will, will, will give you some insights and will give you some momentum and will give you a, a sense of a real faith along the way. So it's March. Um, 14 degrees is when it hits your natal Chiron, and uh, so at that time, uh, it's uh, March, what is that? So on the uh, 13th of March, so the sun will be in Pisces, the sun will be in your seventh house. That's great. So, you know, we're talking again. I'm feeling that because I'm just asking God, what, 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 (laughs) you know, what must (laughs) I do? And I know what I'm doing is not it, but uh, you know, some days, you know, it's it's good, and then some days I just feel like, why am I here, and why am I doing what I'm doing, and why am I alone? <laughs> well, Lenise, I think we're all asking ourselves those questions because these are not these are these are challenging times. You know, I mean, the, the you know how we related to the world 20 years ago is very different to how we are relating to the world now. I mean, let's go back in time just for a moment. 20 years ago would have been uh, 1991. Let's fast forward. Let's make it say 1994. Let's go to 1994. 1994 was the Clinton era. um, And uh, there was uh, more of a sense of optimism uh, now that we had uh, rid ourselves of George W. Bush. And the economy was on the rise. Uh, the, the Federal Reserve had interest rates were much lower. Uh, there was a lot of mo- money that was being spent in the rise of the tech sector. Uh, people were happier. They were more optimistic. Now, on the other hand, there was tons of conspicuous consumption. People were into McMansions. You know, there was you know we were ramping up to to Glass Steagall and everybody you know buying homes with with absolutely zero oversight. And that was the shadow of that. But really, it was in some ways closer to um, the linear world that we had been living in. We are living in a nonlinear world now. We are living in a, in a world that is fragmented and multiversal because of what happened on 9-11-2001 and what's happened to the economy since then. And we were all trying to kind of like Find out where we fit now. Most people think, most people walk around feeling like, well, when is the next shoe going to fall? You know, most people are sitting around like with a sense of dread, you know, because they're, you know, they're trying to figure out the world and the world is, trust me, the world cannot be figured out at this point. It is, it is far too uh, fractal and random. I mean, you can figure it out if you want to, but it's going to take you into some really dark places. So what we have to do is we have to find meaning in our lives based on where we are right now and how how our souls really want to um, breathe through us and into our into our physical incarnation so that we can have um, an expression that 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 gives us a sense of purpose in our lives and and when we and during this time when things that we used to hold dear and which meant a lot to us, um, are, are fading away, we have to redefine what's important. And I think that that's what you're in the process of. 